Welcome everybody to our next uh, webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers and uh, I say welcome also in the name of uh, JFT Brokers today at the 9th of uh, November um, 2017. Wow, yeah, 7 o'clock uh, p.m. as usual for the kind of webinars, that kind of topics. Today's uh, topic is DAX Gap Close Strategy. Um, I think something you have heard um, in a lot of textbooks, articles all around uh, that we have gaps and uh, there's uh, a myth that uh, gaps are closed uh, always or not nearly always. Um, yeah, and that we maybe can trade that kind of approach profitable. So we will have a close look to uh, that kind of approach with uh, ducks gap close. Um, and funny enough, uh, I have to tell you a side story here. Uh, and that is that uh, another um, colleague um, working totally different company, uh, working at God Mode, um, has published an article, more or less exactly the same topic, same conclusions. It's really nice. We haven't talked about uh, that topic. Um, so we even don't know each other personally. Um, but funny enough, it is as it is. So um, he wrote an art article and uh, I do the webinar here. Uh, but same conclusions, uh, which is interesting and uh, maybe supports uh, that basic analysis here. As always, um, the webinar is uh, recorded and uh, you can already upload uh, or better, better to say download uh, the slides, slides of today's webinar um, via the go to webinar control panel and um yeah you will find the recordings of the webinar on the jfd youtube channel just uh, press exactly that jfd youtube channel uh, at google and uh, you will be immediately directed to that youtube channel if you want to get in touch with me personally you uh, that's absolutely no problem just use the email address uh, mentioned on the first slide here i know i have a very complicated last name so it's uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com um, I mentioned that especially because uh, if you want to have those slides or ex Excel sheets I will show later, uh, then just send me an email and uh, I will make sure that you will get them. Good. Um, as always, before really starting, I have to show uh, this one slide uh, because we talk about trading strategies and you will indeed see that today we have a very simple but maybe um, um, very convincing uh, strategy, but finally you trade always on your own uh, when you do your personal trading. And uh, therefore I have to show up this slide as always. So having done this, let's go into the topics of today. Um, as the title already tells you, we talk about gaps. So we have to define exactly what uh, a gap should be is and how a gap will be closed um, maybe you would say hey that's easy uh, there's only one definition no nope. <laughs> uh, there are a couple of definitions uh, for for gaps there's something like a common sense but uh, the best is i define exactly the way how I call a gap a gap and uh, then we can do the analysis exactly along that line. So um, so no misunderstanding finally because we really do it mathematically in the final end and therefore we need strict rules as always um, when talking about those kind of analysis. Since we, we um, will develop something on uh, DAX, the so-called DAX Xetra, which means the standard um, trading times. Um, German time would be uh, nine o'clock a.m. Um, until half past five um, p.m. Uh, and therefore we need exactly those prices. Uh, and um, since I get a lot of questions of how to get price histories, uh, I will show it here once again. Uh, for that example. And the good thing as well is that, especially at JFT Brokers, we you have a CFD instrument, which is exactly the Xetra DAX. That means um, 
the the trading will stop at half past five and um if for example a stop loss would be um hit later it will not be executed it only depends on the next morning at nine o'clock uh, and uh, if uh, still the dax is uh, at your stop loss level then the stop loss uh, will be hit uh, of course but uh, finally um, you don't care about the night on the other hand you have that gap risk if you would trade overnight but that is something we will not do uh, so we don't need um, th those kind of aspects but i just want to mention and i will show you later how to find uh, that instrument uh, on the jfd mt4 platform it's a good instrument because uh, it still has uh, exactly one point spread so um, it's uh, good to have uh, those good trading conditions there before really going into the topic of gap close, I want to share with you another DAX analysis. And uh, as you know me um, more and more uh, during the last couple of months, if I talk about an, a DAX analysis, I don't talk about chart analysis. It's uh, just pure mathematically, but we can draw some conclusions which are really amazing. Um, I haven't thought about that uh, before I'd simply done those kind of analysis. And it, it's more the question, when is the moment of growth of the DAX? So um, when in time is really, or what portions really make the overall growth? Because we know, everybody knows uh, that uh, on a long uh, time scale, uh, the DAX goes simply north. Um, but let's have a look when the, the, the growth of the DAX will really happen. It's amazing, uh, the result, but uh, you will see in a, in a minute. Then finally, of course, we go into the DAX gap close analysis and try to uh, try to de derive a real trading setup uh, out of that. And more or less astonishing, once again, uh, we will have a profitable strategy, <laughs> but uh, it will be totally different than you may expect. Uh, so it's really um, nice that we have um, yeah, a few maybe um, remarkable uh, things exactly today. Um, so let's start with the definition of a gap and the gap close. Um, you see here, I have an example. Uh, it's indeed the ducks, but I uh, simply um, without time scale and uh, no y-axis here because we don't need it uh, for the definition of a gap so we have some candles and um, of course there is one obvious gap exactly in the middle of the picture and that obvious gap is exactly here and i wrote down the definition of um, gap up and gap down so in this case here in the middle of my my example we have um, a gap up uh, and the definition is simply that the open of the new candle which is exactly here uh, at the position of my mouse uh, cursor here uh, that that open is above the previous candle high um, and uh, that is meant with um, that uh, um, writing t minus one so that means the previous candle uh, simply so and uh, of course here we have a gap so that open is above the previous high and therefore we have a gap up the definition of how a gap, uh, uh, that a gap is closed is simply in this case it's not closed <laughs> because the price during the next day here um, never went down to that high so that gap is still open and it's not closed which might be obvious here in this case that we have here a, a gap up and uh, an additional gap up here um, is maybe not that straightforward always let's do a quick exercise here and um, I first uh, will mention my question here how many gaps are uh, exactly in this chart and um, 
I know the time is short and uh, I will not talk uh, uh, minutes uh, just uh, around the chart. So you have a few seconds to, to maybe count the gaps within the chart. Um, and finally, you may be surprised with the final answer. But um, so we have a couple of um, obvious gaps here, like uh, you saw the one uh, before. Um, and there might be gaps you don't think about. Um, so the, uh, in practice, so in the real practice, it's much easier than looking to a, a historical um, candle chart because at the moment, when you you at nine o'clock and you look to the chart, uh, then the gap might be much more obvious than within this chart here. But um, anyhow, so answer comes now. Uh, I don't see a remark uh, yesterday um, when I have done the same webinar in, in German. Um, so I got answers like uh, three can uh, three gaps and uh, another one voted for six gaps. But uh, the final answer is 11. And uh, still, I'm not sure whether I counted uh, those gaps really right. So we have, and I marked uh, all the gaps uh, with an uh, arrow here. Um, and a lot of them might not be that obvious. So um, in this case, I marked uh, already 11 gaps. Let's start with the first one, just to see how difficult uh, it may be. Oh, there's somebody already saying, uh, I count 16. Uh, okay, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm even still not sure. Uh, later, we do it mathematically uh, in Excel, then there's no question. Uh, but let's start here, that you see why it's that difficult. Let's start with the first one here. Um, the open of the candle is exactly here. And that open is below the previous low of that candle. So we have a gap here. OK, the gap is closed, no question. Um, and you see there are other gaps which might not be that obvious. For example, this one here. So my mouse cursor is now here. Uh, put it a little bit aside. Uh, we have the same situation here. Um, previous candle, the open of the candle is here, far below. So um, once again, it's not that obvious that we have a gap here. It doesn't look like uh, at first view. And still, there are a lot of other gaps um, which you only find on the second view. And what I, um, but once again, in reality, it's much more easy if we trade uh, finally those gaps because it's a more, uh, yeah, it's a real market opening. Uh, it's uh, much easier than afterwards. And even the last one here, and uh, this is more or less exactly on the edge. Um, no, no, sorry, it's not on the edge. Um, this is the, the open um, of uh, that candle is um, here. So. Um, you see uh, that we have a gap uh, even for the last one as well. So really a lot of gaps. Um, I marked 11 and maybe uh, one of you is uh, even more right than me here with 16. Uh, anyhow, in this case, um, I marked um, those which are filled with um, with that uh, special color here. So three, uh, which are not filled, uh, three gaps are not filled and you see them here. Um, the percentage uh, of uh, that, that uh, one third, about one third is still open. Um, you will later see is more, exact, more or less exactly uh, what is the overall average, which is astonishing as well. Um, but anyhow, so that's the definition of gaps and gap close. So let's um, go further with uh, historical um, data we need in order to develop uh, such a strategy. And my data source here, um, I use at uh, Finance Yahoo. And let me quickly uh, share this with, um, with you. So um, then you, it becomes much more obvious how I always get my historical data. Um, 
and um, so that is uh, finance yahoo and then we go to markets world indices and uh, it's quite easy to to get those data uh, within that list we find the ducks under g dex Duxy, which is a symbol at um, here at uh, uh, yahoo finance and then we go for uh, historical data then we can select um, the time uh, period we want to have i go for maximum um, and uh, then i can download um, apply and then i can download um, those data and now i have for more or less 20 years uh, the data how does it go further because uh, you will see if you do the same exercise um, that uh, unfortunately yahoo has done something which is um, not that good but i simply want to show you what what i mean here so those are the data and hmm, um, first we delete a few columns here which because adjusted close and something like that volume uh, we don't care but now you see hmm, what's wrong with the data or oh, not really wrong but you see uh, sometimes here a null um, and uh, maybe that's weekends or maybe that's uh, days uh, without trading um, but finally when, when we want to 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 deal with those data we have to get rid of those um, and I just show you how easy it, you can manage um, in order to get them right uh, we simply mark them then we sort the data uh, for example along the close data and uh, then you, we have all this null um, at the very end we can delete them and then we sort them back um, with the date and then we have all those uh, rows deleted but now you see another thing which is not good here um, in the beginning of the data uh, you see that uh, open equals high equals low equals close so mm, that's wrong definitely wrong so we have to delete those as well and um, just to to have it easier i simply uh, do high minus low and get this zero here and then i can um, scroll down uh, to where we where the data are correct and that's exactly here and in order to start with a new year i delete all those data here um, oops and um, delete and then we have it so that's the preparation uh, just to to get the data right um, quickly done um, it's a little bit sorting and uh, then you finally uh, get them right uh, all the data and uh, we have now data since 1994 so a little bit more than 20 years uh, that's a lot of data we can deal with and uh, can we can do our kind of analysis so how to start um, what's first I mentioned um, that Within the scope of, of the DAX close uh, DAX gap analysis, I did something else, and uh, which is really astonishing, uh, or at least with the conclusions uh, we can draw from that. And um, as I mentioned already, DAX goes mainly north. That is no secret. Um, that's uh, true for nearly every index. But uh, the question is: Is the main growth overnight or at daytime? So think about. Um, since we, we, we have the Xetra values, uh, is it grows during the day, so between nine and uh, half past five, or is it maybe during the night, so just always the opening, which is already um, giving us uh, the overall gross within the ducks? So that's a question. But now we do the analysis, and then we can. Um, look what's the real result of that so how to do that um, just um, i only will um, introduce a little bit of how and what i have done here so first i built up a number simply close minus open and do the percentage calculation so think about training 
that would mean that it's a gross or the percentage chain, change during a day. So from open to close. So in the first um, row here, that's a 1% growth within that day, starting at the open, ending at the close. Then I did something else. And that analysis is now, let's look for the growth, so the percentage change from close of previous day to open of today. So that is the growth or the percentage change overnight without really trading the Xetra DAX. And the main volume is really traded during those um, uh, hours I mentioned from nine to half past five. But that is a change, a percentage change during the night or during the non-trading hours. So that's the difference open minus close previous and do it in percent. And finally, what I have done is here, simply the close to close um, calculation. Um, so from one close to the next, which is more or less uh, the DAX itself, but anyhow. So the percentage uh, grows from close to close. And what I did now, I have added those values up like an equity, like, an, uh, like a real account, just the percentage changes. And now the astonishing result. What you have here is in three um, colors. In blue, the close to open. So that is adding up all percentage changes during the day. From It's like a trade we do from the open at nine to the end of the day at half past five. And if we just want to think about like real trading, it would be always a long trade. And that would be your equity. It's a zero line, more or less. So during 20 years, just adding up all percentage changes during daytime, during the main trading hours of the Xetra DAX has not gained anything. It's a zero line. And in between 2003, we have a deep dip, uh, dip south to the south. That's astonishing that within the normal trading hours, we have on that long run, not a single growth in the DAX, no uh, gain. The overall gain of the DAX, which is uh, more or less the, the yellow line here, stems from the night. Because here the red line is adding up all the percentage changes from close of previous day to open of next day. That's interesting. That's really astonishing. And honestly, I would have not expected such a result. We have may or less, more or less three periods here. Uh, one starting at uh, my chart here and then going up to 2000. Steep increase. All the gains have uh, been developed at night. Then the next uh, more or less 10 years, um, it's more or less flat. And since 2010, or a little bit before, we have the straight line here once again. So during the last 16 years, the growth of the ducks has been at night. Who would have expected exactly that result. I don't have an explanation. And um, I only share that kind of information here with you, not already telling you, uh, hey, that's a great strategy. But maybe we can use exactly that for another strategy to be developed. And that's not the topic of today. <laughs> the, the, the simple answer right now, or for the, drawing the conclusion here, would be open a trade uh, at the close um, so close to half, a little bit before half past five, open a long trade and you close the trade at the next morning at nine. 
that's all you have to do. Uh, that would be really simple. Um, and But at least what I can tell you, <laughs> your equity line looks like this red line. That's astonishing. Uh, so it's really amazing uh, to have that kind of result that all the growth of the ducks, all the gains, um, comes from the night, from the night session, uh, without more or less volume. So anyhow, um, so that's the first conclusion. It has nothing to do with gaps. Uh, on the other hand, what we have here is the origin of the gap we will now uh, talk uh, again. So anyhow, so that's the first result. Astonishing enough. Um, now let's come to the gaps. Um, the DAX gap close trading strategy. How, how do we start? Uh, we have a couple of questions we want to answer and um, those questions will help us to develop that kind of strategy. First hand, we want to know are gaps closed in majority? So, or are they still open? If we would see, hey, <laughs> um, only a few percent of gaps are uh, closed, uh, then it might not be a good idea to close exactly uh, to 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 trade exactly that kind of gap. Um, but let's see what the answer is: how many gaps are closed and how many gaps are left open at least during the first day. If we know how many gaps are closed, then we can ask ourselves: hey, can we trade that kind of gap closing? And of course, we want to know, is it profitable, yes or no? We will see that is um, not that promising, but we can do a little bit more, and that will help us to get, finally, um, that kind of trading strategy. Trading the gap close normally means, let me go uh, to that slide here back, let me always do it here with an extreme negative uh, result uh, in here at the, uh, okay, let's even go here, then we have only one example. Um, so in the middle here, we have that gap up. Trading the gap close normally would mean that at the open of that candle here in the middle, we have a gap up, then we would open a short trade expecting that gap to be closed. So it would be a short trade, um, expectation south, and that should be our deck, um, gap close strategy. Gap up, go for a short trade, gap down, go for a long trade, always expecting the gap to be closed. So that's what we have in mind. Now let's go into the figures. So as you know, we have already uh, done a little bit here. Uh, we have the, the DAX values, open, high, low, close. Then we have done our analysis uh, on my previous Excel sheet, still here uh, within that Excel sheet as well. But now um, let's go, oops, that's too far. Uh, here, how I have done this analysis simply in Excel. So first question is, I have to translate my formulas on my slide just into Excel which is not a big deal, but I just want to show it here a little bit. Uh, so we want to ask, do we have a gap up? And if the answer is yes, I want to have a one here and otherwise a zero. And what we have to do is we have to compare the open with the high of the previous candle. So that is exactly that condition. And so that's the definition of a gap up. And um, whenever we have a gap up, then we get a one in that um, column. Gap down is more or less the same, but now we have to compare the open with the low of the previous candle. And if our open is below the low of the previous candle, um, then once again, uh, I get a one here. Um, let's uh, check a little bit here. In this case, uh, we, we have a gap uh, down. Uh, let me mark it, then it's a little bit easier to see. And you see, hey, the open is um, about 10 points below the low of the previous candle, and therefore we get a one here within that column. Whenever we have a gap, so therefore we have the um, condition, uh, do we have a gap up? Then I simply 
calculate in numbers in percentage uh, here that gap up so that we know how big is a gap and same we do for gap downs finally what we do here is we ask ourselves hey is that gap closed and in order to close the gap um, yeah that we need two conditions one we need a gap so therefore we have the condition do we have a gap and second question is that gap closed if yes then we get a one here as well and the same for gap downs now the int interesting result you see that i have summed up all um, the the gap downs and uh, the as a gap up closed and the gap down closed and it's more or less the same number and you see uh, here oh there's still a german word that is the percentage gap up closed uh, that means untile but anyhow so in rough numbers two third uh, of all the gaps are always closed um, so that's already promising that uh, we know that uh, most of the gaps are closed now let's think of a trait let me go back to my um to my slide here uh with my picture so once again um in this case in the middle here at the open of that candle we would open a short trade expecting the gap to be closed now we have a problem and the simple problem is that we don't know where to set a stop loss so we have a trade without stop loss just expecting the gap to be closed that's all we can do virtually or not or even virtually uh, even in practice we we could say okay uh, we we place a stop loss um, i don't know one percent above that limit here uh, above the entry for the short trade but then still within my excel sheet and doing the analysis on on a d1 chart uh, finally i don't know what event happens first the gap close maybe with not in this case <laughs> because that gap is not closed or hitting the stop loss okay therefore we cannot really say we we place a stop loss here because then we would have to go to to um, smaller time frames in order to to know what event stop loss or take profit uh, is first by the way take profit is the high of the previous candle so okay then let's think about a trade without stop loss i know that's dangerous but uh, in order to do a quick calculation and later um, you will see that kind of calculation will help us a lot um we we assume we do a trade without stop loss you know me more and more that uh, that's not what i really do but in this case just for for consideration for calculations we will do it so um then we have the following situation we open the trade here and if during the day the gap is not closed then the trade would end at the final close of the day and that's something we can calculate in this case if the gap would be closed we would gain exactly the gap size as our profit and in this case the, the downside or uh, it would be a minus trade because that trade would finally end here um, at that close which is then because it's a short trade a real bigger minus trade let's start with that kind of calculation and look how where we get with that so i have done exactly that um, the profits i have uh, added all the profits here or not in this case uh, i have um, first um, put them into the excel sheet uh, if a gap is closed then you see we get a, a positive result here the 0.11 percent um, and for example here we have an example the gap is not closed and um, we close the trade at the close of that candle and that trade would be closed with minus 1.22 percent and that for gap ups that for gap downs and then adding up all the stuff that's all we can do and then we can look for the equity once again 
in the same way we did it before. Uh, that's a chart you know already. And here we are. Here's a result of our gap close strategy without for looking for real trades. It would be trades without stop loss. We would gain if the gap is closed exactly the gap size. That's our profit. And if the gap is not closed, then the trade would be um, ended, would be closed at uh, half past uh, five. What do we have? Also, we know that the majority of gaps is closed. We have equities which go straight to the south. Um, both gap up and gap downs. They behave more or less the same. Uh, the main difference is here at the final end. Um, um, here, the gap down close would work because here the equity goes north. So the conclusion is, although we know that the majority of gaps is closed, we cannot trade them profitable, at least not without a stop loss. We have a hit rate of 64%, but our result is negative. But now think about it. What looks extremely negative here, can we change that to a positive result? If you think a little bit more, then you have the immediate answer. Yes, of course, we can. Let me go back to my picture. What if we simply change the trade direction? In this case, we have a gap up per definition. So we realize exactly our gap up at the moment of the open of that day. We have a gap up, and since we now reverse our thinking, we say we do not speculate on a gap close. No, we want to have the price going north. If we have a gap up, we trade long. So we open a long trade, which indeed within that example here is a perfect example. And you see trade would um, finally end in a big profit. Now we can set a stop loss perfectly. Let's set our stop loss at the gap, meaning it's in this case the previous high of that candle. So we can place our stop loss on that level here, on the high of the previous candle. We open the trade at the open of the day. And if the stop loss is not hit during the day, we close the trade when Xetra DAX is closed, which is half past uh, five. So that's all. Now we have a complete picture of a strategy because we have a, a, a good stop loss. And the stop loss is simply being um, set or, or established by the chart itself, which is perfect because you may already realize what we have here compared to other strategies we discussed during the last months is a strategy without any parameter. We have nothing to optimize, at least up to now. We don't have an EMA period, uh, which we turn from 10 to 20 to 200. We don't have a percentage stop loss value. So we have a stop loss, but the stop loss is already um, being set by the chart itself. So it's, it's inherent. That's perfect. That's really perfect to have no degrees of freedom to have a strategy without any parameter. Still, you can introduce a lot of parameters per, uh, here additionally, and you may uh, enhance our uh, the results. Uh, but it's good to know that already without any parameter, we have something which should be profitable. You may 
listen exactly, I change to should. We have to check something. We are not at the final end in our strategy development. Simple reason. What we have done up to, up to now, we have not incorporated any costs. So just uh, mirroring those lines um, is nice and is exactly right if we would not have any costs of trading. No commissions, no spreads. And as you may know, um, the costs of trading are always something which have to be uh, calculated here as well. Because if we don't do it, uh, we might be misled. Because finally, if we would trade it, uh, the costs can um, can take can 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 beat uh, can um, get all our our profits. So can compensate all our profits. So we have to take those profits uh, those uh, costs um, in mind, and we we have to calculate them. So therefore, what we do next is. Let's try to translate that result in real trades. And real trades in my language means we want to trade them in the risk unit R. And as you know, how is it done? Um, let me go back to my, my picture. Risk trading in risk unit R means if you want to place here an order, like here, and let's assume um, the gap has a size here of 30 points. If you want to risk 60 euros for that trade, then at JFD you would open the trade with two lots. And you simply translate the gap size and your risk value, 60 euros, into your lot size calculation. And if you do analysis like this, it's the best you can do is simply to, to always assign the risk as 1R. Then finally, everybody can do the calculation by its own. Uh, maybe you want to trade uh, with 1R equals 50 euro, or maybe 1R equals 2,000 euro. It's only a matter of lot size, but your risk is always fixed. And you can finally translate it to your position size of your trade. But trading in R is the best you can do for, for, for um, those kind of investigations. And therefore, we will do it exactly as, like this. So the gap size is now our risk. And that equals 1R. If we would gain here, and that is, would be an example here, that uh, finally, um, the, the percentage profit we have here is exactly double as big as the gap size, then we would earn, we would gain two R's. In euros, it simply depends on um, how many euros you assign to one R. I have done this here within um, the Excel sheet. And um, so it simply goes further here, further down the road. Um, and I have calculated everything, including well, the, um, the risk value of the gap size, which is 1R. Then I have put additionally two things. Every trade ends, and then I have to subtract a one-time spread from my profit. So if I have 80 points profit in DAX points, then I, I assume here 1.5 um, DAX points. Um, and uh, the reason for using 1.5 is not uh, um, JFD is offering one point. Um, it's uh, 0.5 is simply uh, they stand for the, the, the commission we have to pay as well. So it's a rough estimate uh, to incorporate the commission here as well. So that's a good estimate. So we use a spread of 1.5. And I put something else here. And what I put else is we have finally trades 
which have we, we trade extremely small gaps. We have had examples like this uh, on my, my introductional slide. Let's have a look here um, that we have trades with an extremely small gap. Let me find an example, um, hopefully fast enough, um, that we have a very um, small gap size. Mm, now they are, in this case, all the examples are not that, uh, maybe this one here. So we have, from time to time, we have the situation that we have extremely small gaps, maybe only one point. If one point later equals one R, it would mean um, if you trade um, with a risk of 100 euro, then you would trade 100 lot. So that's uh, dangerous and even um, complicate even placing those orders. So what I have put additionally into the calculation is whenever I have two small gaps, I assume uh, values for the risk calculation of 0.1%. Um, I will show what happens if I go to zero um, with that um, later. So we get here now our equity. Equity for that kind of strategy, you remember, we know originally we went south and now in we go north. But the good thing is what we have here as our final, oh, sorry, uh, that is um, going north with that. And now we have it here uh, in risk calculation in units of R. And you see that we finally, over the last uh, 20 years, we would profit uh, approximately 1,000 Rs within, with that kind of strategies. If you want to have your values, you have to multiply it simply by a number which um, you risk per trade. If that would be 100 euro, then that would multiply to 100,000 euro. You see that strategy would have run extremely well until 2010. And even then, still we have a growth. The downside is a little bit here, exactly during the last one and a half year, uh, the strategy would went south, so um, we would not have profits. Um, but anyhow, remember how easy, how simple that strategy is. We don't have any parameter. We don't have an EMA value we have to care and to optimize and maybe over-optimize. We don't have any parameter at all. So it's simply driven by the price value itself. That's all. Let me show you what happens when we, uh, if I would um, not have this minimum um, stop loss value or uh, size of the gaps, then you would have an equity like this, which really looks strange, isn't it? Um, and you, you may wonder because of those vertical lines here, but it's more or less something mathematically. That happens because the gap size is maybe 0.01%. And then we would trade with that small gap size and we would have an enormous uh, trading volume. And then we would, of course, gain a lot, but that's not, uh, that's more, let's call it a, a mathematical artifact here. Therefore, it's good to have uh, that kind of uh, a minimum value. Uh, otherwise, uh, we would not be able to trade it uh, directly. So we have a good strategy, very simple to do. And all we have to do is we look for, and let me show it here directly in MT4, uh, how we would trade that kind of strategy, for example. And you may trade that CFD on uh, Xetra DAX directly. You may trade, you can still trade it with a standard uh, DAX index, or you can trade it uh, with, even with the FDAX. Um, but you would use those hours, nine o'clock German time until half past five German time to close the trade, and that's all. And here at JFD, we have um, this uh, German uh, 30 uh, cash 
Xetra, and we can open a chart here, and then you directly see how it works. Um, let me have that all, uh, same graph than before, and then you can see uh, that's exactly those pictures we have on my slides uh, on my slides as well. And you see, <clears throat> if you look now, uh, the price is fixed. Um, it will not change during the next uh, 12 hours uh, or even 13 hours. There's no change. Um, and tomorrow morning, it will open. You will directly see at nine o'clock where and whether we have a gap. Um, it's more or less, um, no, we might have a gap down. <laughs> we don't have a gap up, more or less for sure, uh, tomorrow morning. But we might have a gap down, and we would trade that gap down further to the south. That's the definition of the strategy we have developed during the last uh, one hour. Uh, we Then we would trade to the south. We have our stop loss is the low of that candle. So I can give it already a number. So the stop loss would be at um, 13,174.25. Um, you can see the number always um, on the right corner, um, the right low corner here on, on the screen. I cannot go with my mouse cursor there because then the number would uh, vanish. But uh, uh, so it's easy to, to have that number. I know already the potential stop loss for tomorrow short trade. If we have a gap down, then we would open that short trade and that's all we have to do. So we have an impressive equity line without any extra parameter, no turning point, nothing. It's a pure strategy without any additional parameter, which is astonishing that it works that well. Um, but it is as it is. So that's fine. That means for us, we have a new strategy. Um, we can trade. Let me uh, make my summary here. That And don't forget the other observation first. We don't use it right now for a strategy. That strategy would be even more simple. Um, um, so the downside would be that we have no stop loss. That would be opening a trade um, a few minutes before the DAX, the DAX closes. And then we would open a, a long trade. And that's all. And we would do it always, every day. Um, and that only because we have made the observation that all the growth of the last 20 year DAX growth stems from the nights and not from the days, which is always astonishing that we have that kind of result. So let me see how we can turn that into an additional strategy. It will be a topic in maybe in a few weeks or months. Um, but we have another strategy now. We know that two thirds of all gaps are closed. Sounds promising in order to trade the, 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 the gap close. But it turns out that without any stop loss, we cannot trade it profitable, even if we have that edge, that probability av advantage of two thirds, which is enormous. But finally, our trades went south or our equity went south. But since we have that kind of observation, that kind of conclusion, we know exactly what we can do. And that is reverse that kind of approach. And that means if we have a gap up, then we open a long trade. And if we have a gap down, we open a short trade, which is exactly vice versa to that gap close idea. Now we have a stop loss because the stop loss is the gap itself. And we can trade a normal trade. With a stop loss, we have no take profit. We simply have a time stop, and the time stop is half past five. That's all. We have a parameter-free strategy, which is astonishing that we can turn that already into a profitable one. Um, and that's good to know. And uh, we have a simple um, way how to calculate the profits 
and you have seen that all in those Excel sheets. If you have interest in those sheets, I will share those sheets with you as well. Just send me an email here to s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com and I will make sure that you get those sheets as well, um, the slides and the Excel sheet. <laughs> so both and then you can do your own calculation, maybe for other underlyings. I have not done this exercise up to now, um, but anyhow. So hopefully you enjoyed the webinar. Um, so it's time to say have a good night. Um, maybe not directly, but I wish you a good evening. Bye-bye. See you next.